Hey, what's up, man? Can you hear me? What up, dude? I can hear you. Cool. How you doing? Not too bad. How about you? I'm fucking great. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what, what, uh, you said you were platinum, right? That's what league you're in? Plat one? Yeah, plat one. Okay. And you want to focus on ZVT today? Yeah, like, um, multiple drop play really, really screws me up. I got some replays of it, um, but just when they drop, you know, main third, stuff like that, just, I'm all over the place. I lose too many drones. And sure. It's basically over. Okay. Uh, so, um, all right. So here's what we're, here's what we're going to do. This is how we got to get this going. If you're online already, just, uh, open up like the GM list and you can just message me straight up unless okay. me, unless I don't know if you're in like the, the group chat or anything like that, but. Oh yeah. Five traders. Yeah, man. But it, oh, there you are. Okay. I see you. All right, cool. All right. So I'm going to make you leader of the party and, uh, okay. just host a replay. But before you start it, make me the leader of the lobby so I can control the timer and stuff like that. And we're going to get to the bottom of this, dude. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um, oh, there was a patch. Uh, a recent patch. Okay. So here's what you got to do then instead. Just send me the replays in Discord, uh, in the private chat we have right now, and I'll just watch them at the same time as you, I guess, because we can't do this online then. Okay. Which is unfortunate, but we can still do it at least, but just not online together. Yeah. All right, let me do that real quick. And it's it's up to you if you want to like open up the replay as well, and I can just tell you the timestamp I'm at the whole time, or you yeah, can. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I got your first one. Okay. And then the other one is Battle Mech. Okay. Um, like the Hellion Cyclone kite stuff. Sure. Um, sure. See. All right, I just went into the into the first one you put in Discord. Okay. You versus Ellie. Yeah. Okay, there's the other one. Okay. Nice. So, um, do I need to leave the party to? You can just, uh, yeah, I already, oh, already left. Okay, yeah, it's because right, I'm, right. I'm offline now since I'm watching it. Okay. I'm at zero seconds uh, in the Ellie versus 11 replay. It's loading right now. Okay. All right, so we're going to, we're going to see some stuff, dude. We're going to see your build. We're going to see what you're doing, how you're opening. And then, uh, that is a big part of it, but yeah, yeah. just, um, just in general, whenever you play a Terran who's going bio, a good tip, which sounds crazy, but it's it's it will probably help you out like a lot in the long run if you get used to playing like this, would be have a rally point of your hatcheries in the middle of your bases, uh, and then you like all your lings and stuff go there. You don't always rally every or you don't always like add your eggs in your control groups and stuff like that if you're already doing that. You just kind of like mm -hmm. make everything go to a, a center area of your base. And then whenever you get dropped, grab some of that ball of units you have just chilling and send it to the drop and like your main and leave it there. Oh, okay. And then you do the same thing with like your third. Just grab a ball of units, send it to the third and leave it there. And if you just const okay. if you just constantly try to like maintain maybe like three banelings and like, let's say maybe like 20 zerglings at each one of those things, at each one of those like areas of your, of your base, you'll never get really pressured by one or two medivacs. And it'll be easy as hell to deal with it. And then it, you you kind of play like this while you're being defensive. And then when you finally decide, all right, it's time to move out, then you can be like, select all army, just put it into a hockey again, and then you can go attack. And then you can make new units and do the same thing with it. With your new units, you can be like, okay, all the new units I have now that are, are going to now once again defend my base can just go to the rally, the rally point in the middle. I'll make them, not add them into my group while they're in eggs. And then if I get dropped during an attack, I just grab from that group. And send it around my bases again. Mm -hmm. it's so a, do you you don't do you spine spore up everything too? You can, but you don't want to really rush that first because it's just gonna fuck your economy up. Gotcha. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hit play in three, two, one, and I'm gonna be on times two as well for your speed. Okay. Okay. So, but yeah, that's kind of gonna be the trend of what we're gonna talk about most likely, and uh, we'll come back to that later. But that's a good mindset versus bio. If you're okay. if you're like trying to play a macro game basically, and you're the one on defense first, which is usually how TVZ goes, 
when it's bio yeah. versus Zert, like Ling Bane, Hydra, whatever. Yep, that's exactly what I what I go for when I when I see stuff like this. Ling Bane, Hydra. It's okay. Either um, into either Ultra or Corruptor, it just depends. Okay. All right. So, uh, so far your build's fine. Uh, you went for a 16 hatch and do a, a 18 gas and a 17 pool. Yep. I, uh, if I'm gonna pause it really quickly at 135. Um, okay. uh, so uh, honestly, the only thing I would say you could do a little differently with your build, but it's really minor, is you could actually just go for a 17 hatch. Uh, and the only reason why I say that is because you actually delay one of your larva a little bit longer if you go 16 hatch and Terran very rarely will ever block your base at your natural. It's more of a Protoss thing and it's good against yeah. Zerg as well because it also helps a lot with 12 pools, but Terran really doesn't do anything to punish your 17 hatch. It's very uncommon, but mm -hmm. if you want to just make it universal, if you're like a guy who likes to go 16 hatch in every matchup, it's fine. It's not a big deal, but just know that yeah. what I just said is it does apply. Uh, okay. And the other thing too is you just saw an SCV walk next to that like we haven't i haven't looked at his vision i'm looking at your vision by the way so i don't know exactly what the terran's doing but i just okay. saw an scv touch your hatchery and then go to the right a little bit and mm -hmm. that would make me worried with your positioning of your overlord right now uh your your second overlord and the reason why is because you actually wouldn't know if you're getting bunkered or not um, uh, okay so um, usually i send my my second overlord down there to look for the like a proxy for racks or something like that um, sure uh the only reason why i would tell you to uh, leave, like I would say, I would recommend more to leave your overlord in front of your natural is because if the guy proxy raxes you and he goes up to build bunkers in your base, you will see the bunkers starting by the time your pool finishes, anyways. So you should be able yeah. to make lings right away, no matter what. Okay. the The only time you'd ever be kind of like surprised is if uh, the guy decided to just like stockpile marines and not build a bunker. But if he did that, yeah. you would figure that out with your first overlord because you would see no natural. And you would also see, yeah, yeah. like, nothing at his ramp and shit. And you'd be like, oh, okay. This is weird. Let's start making links. Okay. So, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just a little risky to have your overlord a bit out of, uh, like, away from the uh, from the natural base, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hit okay. I'm gonna hit play again in 3, 2, 1. I'm at 137 right now. Okay. All right. Otherwise, not bad. Pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're going to look at your gas. If you keep mining gas, it's going to be something to look at pretty hard here. And you are still mining gas. Alright, so we're going to come uh, back to this. I, in a, what's up? I, I do go link speed. I think I just hit it a little late. Yeah, but you're still mining gas, though. Yeah, yeah. If, the, if like your plan is not to all-in him, this is massively shitty for you. Okay. Because all it's going to do is it's going to severely uh, slow down your third base, it's going to slow down your queen production. It's going to slow down your drone production. Because look at look at your bank right now. You've got almost yeah. 200 gas right now. And you really have no way to spend it. Mm -hmm. So would you pull all the way off or leave one on? I would pull all off. The the. Okay. So you're making a bailing nest. Okay. I'm going to pause it again at 335. Okay. All right. So in general, um, there's only really two reasons why you would ever want to leave your uh, your workers on gas after you get link speed. And one of those would be if you wanted to go for some type of a, a build that's going to follow up with it really fast. Like an example would be if you were going to go for like double Evo chamber upgrades and get like one, one links really early, uh, that would make sense to do that. Or if you were going to go for a faster layer for something, um, you know, like with tech related, that would make sense to do that. But that's also kind of risky. The only other reason why you would ever... Um, have your drones on gas still is if you were going to do like, let's say your first 50 gas uh, after link speed was going to be a baneling nest. And then you were lit not making drones, but instead you were making mass links and you were just going to go for a big baneling bust all in. Yeah. And all in. Okay. Cause uh, instead what happens is, is those three drones were staying on the gas when your natural only had like one worker on it. Cause you only have like, yep. like, you know, you only have like 20 drones at that point. Uh, and 19 of those are stuck in your main. Uh, but like that would that just slows down so much about how quickly you can get things going. And the biggest one of all is your third base. Like your third base could actually be started so much faster if you don't have uh, the gas running like this. And now, and, and then also if you look at your queen count, you have three queens right now and no queens in production on top of that. 
It's yeah. It's not the worst thing because you have a bailing nest, and a bailing nest kind of makes up for the fact that you're missing out on some queens. But having queens, it just has more utility to work with as well. So if you don't mind the gas, they, these drones not mining gas could have translated into like two more queens basically. Oh, yeah. And having two more queens yeah. a little bit faster could have meant now that's three queens instead of one creep spreading, which can give you so much more control of your area of the map and stuff like that. Uh, it just makes it overall stronger for you. So what's like a good benchmark for starting the third? If I pull my drones from gas, should okay, I start so, my third at like 30, 31-ish? So here's what you should do. Uh, you saturate your main, and you know, as you did, and you get link speed, you get your gas. Your opener was fine. But as soon as you have 100 gas for speed, take all drones off gas. And then you make uh, link speed. Uh, you start your first two queens, and you're just making – you make four links for the Reaper, and then you just make drone, 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 and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Once you make dro queens, uh, once queens one and two pop out of your main and natural, and you start queens three and four, you could then also start a third base. Okay. And then once your natural is at like 12 drones or more, like 12, 13, 14, you can make three drones go into your gas again. Resaturate the gas okay. when your natural is almost fully saturated. Okay. And this opener for you will just be so much more. Um, It'll have so much more power going into the mid game because right now I would say your biggest weakness from this point on is going to be your creep because you haven't really neglected your drones. We can see you have you've been spending most of your larva because you have the gas. But the only the, the only downside right now of your build is that your third is probably 20 seconds later than it should have been and your uh your queens are kind of ceasing production. So your creep is going to have a, a major deficit into where it would be on the map otherwise. Which means that the, yeah. the Terran's timing is going to be scarier for you to deal with if he sets up on an area where your creep is not really spread very far in. Because mm -hmm. that's like the okay. the, the biggest strength of uh, dealing with bio too, if, if, especially if they go for like a timing. It sets the pace for a lot of the game if you crush it or if you get crushed by it. And the creep is how you how that kind of gets dictated really hard. So how many queens should I should I end up with? Around? You should have honestly like six queens, six or seven queens. That would be great, because what you should do okay. is you could go for um, you could make like six queens out of your main and your natural. The whole like one one like you know one by one, making three out of each, and then you can make like one queen when your third's done out of your third base, and then you can stop. And okay. then you what would what what that would mean is you could have three queens injecting the entire time. And you can have four queens creep spreading the entire time. And then as soon as you take like a fourth base, you can take one of those queens off and go inject. Now. And now you could have four queens injecting and three queens still spreading. Gotcha. Okay. So if I go to more bases than that, do I need any more queens to be injecting? Should I be injecting? No, if you, I'm up to six bases, should I be injecting you, all of them? You can inject like four bit. Four queens on, inject, four. Uh, on injecting and you'd be fine. Especially if you're going to go Hydras. Okay. Hydras will spend your money gotcha. pretty fast. Yeah, you would you would only ever really need more than four queens injecting if your whole build was literally just like massling Bane until you're maxed out, because yeah. it's like so cheap on Larva. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, I'm gonna hit play again in three, two, one. But up to this point, you have any questions so far that we haven't covered or? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. And then scouting wise, uh, I like that you're going into his base around four minutes. That's great. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of what his build is. And what yep. his build looks like is it's, it looks like a two-on-one. It looks like he's going to swap exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. So you're expecting to be attacked by some Marines here in a little bit. Um, a great way to deal with it is, you know, just having lings there. You can, because you have a bailing nest, you could also make a few bailings too. It's fine. But So is that ling bailing nest too early? Uh, here, I'm going to pause it again at five minutes and we'll, we'll cover some stuff. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, your bailing nest was way too early. Um, okay. the reason why is because your bailing nest would have been ideal to have defended something like, like if you have a bailing nest before taking a layer, the only time you'd ever really want to do that is when your opponent is going for something that looks like it's going to be really, really aggressive really early, which we're talking about. It's before five minutes. Like we're talking about an cool. attack is like four minutes or like three forty or something like that. Like if they stay on one base, usually. Uh, that, kind of that sure that that could also that that could work yeah. Uh, yeah. An another one would be if you see a Terran who has like he's still making Marines or Marauders and he's making like a bunch of Hellions and you're like okay this looks like I might get hit by like a Hellbat timing. Then having Banes if you're gonna go for a Ling Bane route really early would be great because now you have Banes to deal with the Hellbats. 
Or if the Terran player would have done something like he's gone for uh, like really heavy amounts of barracks. Like random, like it's just an awkward build where you're like, this guy has a shitload of bio and his natural is like super delayed. Like let's say your overlord gets to his base and instead of seeing um, instead of seeing a natural, you see like three racks and he's just making yeah. marines and marauders with add-ons on the buildings. And you're like, okay, this looks like he's going to do some weird attack really early. And then he makes he starts his he starts his natural when you like start your third base, and you're like, yeah. uh, then yeah, bandling nest would be great again. Um, okay. Otherwise, when you should go for a bandling nest, it should be like this. If you remember when I told you you want to take your three drones back on gas when you have like 12, 13, 14 drones on the natural, and you're still mm -hmm. making drones at that point, what you want to do is you want to take a layer first with your first 100 gas, and you want to take a bandling then after with your next 50 gas. And the reason okay, why this is important gotcha. is because it gets a really well-timed bandling speed. Okay. And uh, yeah, bandling speed is ideally what you want to be having the bandling, bandling nest for anyways against Terran because most attacks that are really early against a Terran who's playing pretty standard like this can be dealt with without bandlings at all. Uh, okay. And, that, and the reason why that works is because you have more queens and you have creep spread and you have, like, like we talked about earlier, it synergizes well. If you have vision with creep, you have, uh, like, you can make some lings um, like right around like I would say once you realize he's going like for a two one one, making nothing but lings between the time period in the game of four twenty to five minutes would be great, because if he did like you know an optimal two and one and he shows up at your base right around five minutes, you would have realistically like twenty six lings at that point, and all you gotta do is be underneath his medevacs before he drops, and the more creep you have, the easier that will be to do. Uh, and then he can't drop. Like he just literally can't drop into your lings. But if, however, if he does get a, if he does like drop a little bit safer further away, let's say he drops like on top of the high ground, uh, below where your third is, where that like crystal thing is on the high, um, you know, if you, if, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. If he drops like way the fuck back there, and then he like stems forward and runs into your base, then yeah, you can't get underneath the medevacs if you don't see where they are. Um, but then that's when you you just wait for your queens as well, and you go all right, queens. Like, let the queens get a shot first and have the queens start smacking a medevac or something and then have my lings run in right next to them and get on the marines right after. And then you'd be fine okay. again. Um, but yeah. Uh, up to this point, I would say, overall... Uh, also, the, the other thing, too, is, is if, if you're going to go for Ling Bane into Hydra, I think you're also prioritizing your gas a little bit too hard because the, the, the timing I would love you to go for... This is the most important part about everything we've talked about, by the way. The gas I want you to go for, you already know the main gas where you go three on three until you have 100, take it off, go back on, on that gas again with three when your natural is almost fully saturated. Take your second gas as soon as your natural is fully saturated. When you have like 16 or 17, take a drone off and make a second gas. Saturate that second gas as soon as it's done because this will allow you to have a little bit of extra gas to then make banelings with when you also start baneling speed. When your layer is okay. done, but then do not make more banelings. Or sorry, do uh, do not make more gas until your third base is fully saturated. So right now you're on four gases. About you're about to be on four gases when your third base has zero drones on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this will this will just give you so much more of a balance of your minerals and, and gas because the last thing you want to do against Terran is rush a hydrogen like the second you have a hive. Or I'm uh, sorry, the second you have a layer. Yeah. Taking hydras a little bit delayed is 100% fine. The only reason why you want a rushed layer is for bandling speed. Okay. Should I have a uh, an Evo chamber by now too? No. The, um, you take Evo chambers when you take hydrogen, and you want to take a hydrogen okay. when you start your. Uh, and, uh, so, let me kind of finish the the idea of when you take your gases. So you, you know the first gas, you know the second gas. You do not take the rest of your gas until your third is fully saturated, and then one, once it is. So when you have three fully saturated mineral lines, you can then take all gases that are remaining, which is the last four. Okay. And then that's when you would be like, all right, now let's go double Evo and hydrogen because that's going to be a bit of a... Um, you're going to need to spend a lot more gas now to be like 1-1 one, one plus Hydra speed and Hydra range and start making Hydras and Banes. That's way more gas intensive on your economy, but you just exploded your gas at that point anyways, so you can afford it. Okay. So that's when you want to take sense. all the all that stuff. And then... Um, and then you, uh, the rest of your build would be like, you're going to want to take like a infestation pit when you start 2-2. Two, two. Because if you do it like that, the second your infestation pit is done, if you start a hive, your 2-2 two, two will be finishing right around the time your hive is done. And you can start 3-3 three, three immediately. 
Okay. And then your upgrades just flow really well, and you can just go literally Ling Hydrobane the entire game if you want uh, at this point. Oh, well, really? Even if they go, you know, if they stay on, if they go tank two and and even it, in a mech maybe. Uh, if I think this one they go into Thor's. So if if he's like yeah, if if he's going two on one and he's going bio, you can stay on Ling Hydrobane the entire time and you're fine. Uh, yeah. If the Terran player goes into a mech transition and you're like, okay, my Ling Hydrobane. I keep attacking him with it, and it's not working. It's not breaking him. You're more than welcome to be like, you already have a hive. One of the best one unit you could add to your army that would make it really easy to break him would be Broodlords. Yeah, yeah. And then that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, in general, especially in plat, you probably won't run into that problem a whole lot, though. Uh, if you are macroing like a boss, like if you're just, if the build is flowing really well, like if you're not making the mistakes of the gas here, if you're flowing your economy really well, your supply will always be so ridiculously high and you're just going to crush your opponent with Link Hydra Bane because you're going to have like 50, 60, 70 supply advantages. I'm not even yeah, kidding. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, anyways, let's, I'm going to hit play again and we're going to continue in three, two, one right now. I'm still on times two. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so what you see as well is you see a bunker and you see it. You you scouted the build, but you do see a bunker as well, which also meant that it was you. It's more of a more of a feeling of just like you can be greedier whenever your opponent builds bunkers like this super early, and I, you have been greedy enough to my to my. In my opinion, you were greedy enough. The only problem you really had was your gas, which we already kind of covered. All right. Uh, so the Terran committed pretty hard right there. I want to pause again one more time now at 6.15. And okay. So your opponent right there, uh, this is huge, okay? This is this is really important because I think what you're doing right now is actually incorrect. Your opponent right there just attacked you with an army and he did not harass you and get away with pretty much everything. He committed and lost everything. And with oh, the, So I should have countered? No, 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 no. I think, no. We, I, I think countering is what you're, what you're capable of doing now and I think that's a mistake. Because uh, this dude, has he's shown you he's also making Widow Mines. He's shown you he's also made a bunker. And he's also made a wall. At his, it's actually not even a full wall, by the way. There's a hole on top of that engineering bay. But uh, basically, he has the idea of walling. He has Widow Mines and he has bio and, and bunker. So what happens right now is, is if your opponent attacks you and loses his whole army, if you go for a counterattack, that's not, it's not like it's the worst thing in the world, but there, I think there's a better alternative. Because if you encounter him right now, and let's just let's just say you get a really unlucky widow mine, and you're like, oh god, I just lost like seventy percent of my army because it just blew yeah. up because I'm I'm stuck at his wall here, that'd be really awful for you, and you just kind of throw away your, the lead you just got in the game. But instead, what I think you could do that's even better is if you would just take if you take a drone right now and you just immediately go start a fourth base and you fully saturate your third for what it is, and you could even pre-saturate a little bit of your fourth base, and if you have a lot of money in the bank, you could even take a fifth base. Because if your opponent, like, what, I, what I'm trying to say here is, is like, you just take one big-ass round of your next inject, make nothing but drones. Like, everything is just drones. Because your opponent just threw away about, like, let's say, it's like 15 supply in army. And if we look at units tab right now, the Terran has 11 marines and one Widow Mines currently. And all of these units are located back at his base. They're in the bunker, they're under the medevac. They're, they're not willing to, they're not, like, marching across the map to attack you right now. And you, you also can see with your overlord clearly above the cliff, which is a great spot, by the way, that he's not parade pushing you. He doesn't have like Marines walking out one by one by one out of his base to your base. So this, this yeah, was a, parade, yeah. yeah, this is, this is just a pressure that failed because he lost it all. So there's nothing stopping you from making workers right now. Okay. And the ideal situation, if you're going to go for like a Link Hydrobane macro game, the ideal situation to be in is just to be at least one base above your opponent. But if your opponent does what this guy just did where he just throws an army away you honestly could get up to like 80 drones then like in, in this particular game because it's three base versus two base he just threw something away there's nothing stopping you from going up to four base as saturation which is around 80 and then you could even be like all right now let's even make a macro hatch and just have four queen injecting four hatcheries and you would just max out so fucking fast okay so yeah, I mean, there's no threat, right? Yeah, I, exactly. I have that, more than you, yeah. That's the that's the perfect way to describe it. There is literally no yeah. threat right now, and you're making 26 slings as a follow up. Okay. Yeah. Like these 26 slings reacted. Yeah, they... they'd be great if you made it after a round of drones. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hit play again in three, 
two, one. And now you're starting the Hydrogen. Your Hydrogen timing is great. Like, this is when also you'd be starting Evo Chambers. I think they come here pretty soon. Or now once it finishes, I think. But notice how your gas bank right now is about a thousand. Like, yeah. this would be great if your gas bank was starting to develop really quickly now. When you start going into Hydras and you would have had just a lot more minerals to work with. Which would mean your Ling Bane count, when your drone count would just be a lot higher at this point. Because Hydras are pretty awful anyways if they don't have upgrades. So you definitely don't want to be rushing Hydras. So I like the timing of it, but it's just like, I'm just kind of talking about your gas again. Like the gas is all yeah. way too early for the for what we're doing here. So Hydra thing, bang, I don't upgrade missile attack at all, right? No, you get uh, uh, melee and uh, carapace. Yeah. And you want to stop making Hydras roughly around like 20, 16 to 20, and then you literally stop. Okay. And the whole point of that is you just want to have them supporting the back line to maybe kill Medivax or... Uh, you know, just add DPS to tanks and marines and stuff like that. Alright, so your position right now, I like your patience. It's great. Um, this dude does have Widow Mines and you added Overseers in, it's nice. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause one more time, really quick, really quick. Okay. Uh, 8.47 is my current time. And uh, I'm pausing because you just got dropped in your main. And like you said before, this is something we need to talk about. Yeah. So, first things first, the reason why you're struggling with this a bit is because of your vision. Uh, like it's you're just really not having a lot of vision on the map, and it's making your life a lot harder. This is a good a good habit to start developing. Is we already talked about like how if you made more queens earlier with a, with an altered build, you would have more creep to work with, and your creep could yeah. be further along, and you could just see more in the front, which would make you feel more comfortable because you see what's coming before it actually hits you. The second thing I would love you to do is your first overlord should go scout his base like it did. Your second overlord should scout the front of your base, like, you know, kind of like it was for a little bit. It, you know, you had the right idea. It was scouting your third, but yeah. stay in front of your natural. And then, like, as soon as you realize, okay, we're not getting proxied, you can send your second overlord to the other side of your opponent's base. So if, you're, if your first overlord's above his natural, your second one could be below the main on the bottom left side. And yep, then you can, okay. and then you, it's kind of what you did anyways with another, another overlord because you scouted it four minutes, which was perfect. So you have that down already. That's great. But then every overlord after that, Instead of just having them all kind of like, you see this little like overlord uh, conference in between yeah, your. <laughs> they just go to where I rally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get in the habit of being like, all right, I need to make an overlord and move your camera to like, in, if you look like right above your main in the open airspace, make an overlord, mm -hmm. right click there, and then just let it go. And then make new larvae with something else. The okay. next, the next yeah, overlord. Sometimes I get them killed and ruins everything. Yeah. Just, just like have them, have them go to open airspace. So the first one could be in that first open airspace. Second one could be like to the right of it. Uh, above that thing, it looks like a big fan or something with like blue crystals hanging off of it. Like mm -hmm. you send the next one there. Third overlord could be between your your natural and your third in the open air space there. The next one could be could be the the next open spot below that, and then again the next okay. one could be below that. You just literally fill in the open spots all the way to both corners of the map. Okay. And now suddenly, so I can see the medevac exactly. Coming, right? Yep. Because yeah. he cannot kill those overlords with ground units, uh, because they're in the open air space. Your creep will mm -hmm. fill in the ground that's missing over time. And then the only way he'll you you will lose the overlords is if he has like a Viking, and if he makes Vikings, that tells you something different about his build. Like he's delaying Medivax because he's making a Viking as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and then also if you if like, let's just say a Viking shows up and it starts killing the overlords on the top, and the furthest one out is the one currently getting killed, you could literally pull back your overlords just on that top side, just for a second because he's killing them, and then as soon as the Viking is either killed or it's gone, you can send them right back, and it takes like just two seconds to do it. But it's super important because right now your main is completely blind, which is the only reason why this was so hard to deal with. Um, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the best way to have dealt with it would have been kind of, it's kind of like what you did. I feel like this is what you did where you have your whole army kind of in front of your natural. You just grab like a chunk of it with, a, with your mouse and go, go to my main. And then it deals with it. But you don't send your entire army because you're still worried about the frontal push too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's perfect. You did it. You did it just fine. So far. But it wasn't enough, and I think I lost a lot of stuff here. Let's or I see. Do eventually. Yeah, so. well, like, like yeah. right now, we can see there's nine nine Marines inside the Medivacs, and you currently have Lings that are about to get blown up by Widow Mines. But you yeah, have, yeah. You, you have like another seven Hydras, three Banes, and like another three Lings, or another five Lings coming over to help it. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be fine. Your main should be fine okay. at this point in time. Okay. But then, as soon as you realize your opponent's playing like this as well, this is when I, could, I would be like, all right, well, now 
if you really need to, and you're going you're gonna to be defensive while you continue to make supply, the next round of units you send to your main to defend it, they could just not be in a control group and they can just sit there. And it could be dead, like 15 or 10 supply dedicated to sitting there. But, and then and then you grab that all all and every time you do this like if you like have some units in your main you have a few units in your third and let's say you have like uh, and maybe units in your fourth base or something like that and you have a total of like 40 or 50 supplies sitting there around your base not really doing much you could grab it all again when you decide okay it's time to attack now and then now suddenly okay. your, your army's back at full power and the next units again you make after that could then once again be designed to go again go defend the main go defend the third and then the next time you decide, okay, now I'm going to do a second full attack, and then you grab them again and go attack. But when you're not attacking, spreading your army out is great. When you are attacking, grouping it up and attacking is perfect. Okay. So you're kind of making the mistake where you're you, initially you're grouping your army up with li with limited scouting, and then he attacks you in multiple locations, and now you're you're having to catch up to what he's doing because you have to send units back. To, you have to make up the distance where you're running towards his army as he's already killing your base. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Uh, just having vision will help you out a lot. Like, there's a difference. This is I, like just honestly think about this this mentality or this mindset, and it will help you out so much because there is a there's a difference between reacting to something when it's already happening, and there's a difference between reacting to something that's going to happen about 20 seconds from now, because the feeling of panic gets completely dis disregarded. If you're like, oh look, he's going to drop me because I see that shit coming and it's not going to be here for 20 seconds, I'm just going to go ahead and send something there to deal with it. We're good. Or opposed to like, oh shit, we're getting attacked in the main and he's attacking me in the front of my base. Oh my god. It's so much more hectic and it's it's way harder to deal with shit when it's just like panic, panic, panic. Do it now, do it now. So scouting yeah, to help you out so much. That's the issue. I feel like there's there's so much going on that I end up neglecting something or making a mistake yeah. and I end up losing. You know, and, so. and for sure, that's part of, part of your scouting is a huge reason why. Yeah, okay. Alright, I'm going to resume it in 3, 2, 1. So you dealt with the medevacs, so you uh, got rid of the drop in your front of your base. You did take some damage. Wasn't the greatest, but at least it's cleaned up. A big thing to do too, not only is spreading overlords, but also spreading creep in your main throughout the entire main base. Like if you had two tumors to the right of your main, you would see everything over yeah. there too. Okay. So it's, it's always important to do that. And then, uh, yeah, like you're just, right now what you're doing is you're just trying to max out on Link Hydra Bane. I, I like your economy. I'm going to pause one more time again at 10-10. Okay. Uh, just to talk about like your your overall spending. But here's what I think you should do. This is going to be this is going to be super helpful for you. Uh, this should be your new this is something you're going to always add into your build. Mm -hmm. As soon as you saturate 3 mineral lines and you are going to take gas at your uh, you know like the final four gases and you're, that's when you're going to take your hydra uh, your hydrogen and your two double evo chambers. I want you to also, every single time, build a second hatchery in your main base as well. That's just now okay. part of your build. And then okay. take a fourth base as well. Right after, his, like, when you, as soon as you can, after your three bases are fully saturated, try to take a fourth uh, when you can afford it. But then as soon as you build drones for your fourth base, so you're going to go above three base saturation, I want you to build a second macro hatch, and it could be located wherever the hell you want. It could be a second macro hatch in your main, so you'd have three in total in your main. It could be at your natural. It could be at your third. Wherever you feel like it feels comfortable, it doesn't matter. And then, uh, okay. and then, so this is going to mean it's going to put you on six hatcheries on four bases. Six. Okay. And okay. this is going to help you, like, just get your uh, your spending under control. Because the thing about Ling Hydra Bane is a lot of that army is Ling Bane. Because, like I said before, you don't really want to be making hydras past like sixteen to twenty. You're not going mass hydra. So, mm -hmm. if the primary expense you're going to be going for is pretty much Lings and Banes. It's really hard to get your money spent. It, you, the only way you would spend your money is if you had literally perfect injects the entire time. And even yeah. then, you might have these moments where you're like, oh, I'm at like 900 minerals. We're getting kind of high again. Uh, so having these extra macro hatches is just going to help you out so much more, Even if, especially if you miss a couple of injects here and there. But it's just yeah. going to help you out so much at spending your larva on cheap units. And, and it's going to inflate your supply a lot. Because if you had 3,000 minerals and 2,000 gas... Of extra Ling Bane right now, you would be your supply would be at 168 out of 168, and you would just yeah, be okay. fucking murdering the Starrett right now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, do that in the future. It'll help you a lot. Okay, uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna resume it in three, 
two, one. And this is that point in time when you're you're still being defensive if you just had your army able to spread out a little bit. Um, it'd be great. Because uh, he's got the medevacs just chilling above your third and stuff. And still your main is un unnoticed. Like if two more drops went here, it would be annoying for you again. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Okay. The, also, um, the time which you would want to make static D is when you are at that point where you're like, all right. I'm ready to grab my entire army, even though they've all been spread out, and I'm about to go attack him. You would make Static D just before you make that decision to attack. Like, if you're going to attack, just wait for, like, a little bit, like, maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds, and start Static D at all the bases that are now going to be open, like, two or three spines and, like, a spore. And then you can remake drones that get wasted for that, like, or they get used up for that. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna pause again at 12.15, and we're just going to talk about this really quick. So again, like right now, uh, just to recap, uh, if we were, if your defense was a bit more spread out, you would be just dealing with this so much easier. And you haven't, you yeah. ha still have not yet made the decision to attack him. Yeah. But but again, yeah. when you decide to make that decision, it would be like, all right, three spines at the third, three spines at the main. I cut like three spines at my natural, one spore at each of those as well, and maybe like one spore in my natural in case he like tries to fly the medevac in between my bases. Mm -hmm. And then you're good to go. And then you make, and then all those. Uh, drones that got spent on static D you, re you remake those again into drones again so you're you're not just ruining your own economy and not fixing it uh, and then you know so you're trying to maintain like around roughly 80 drones the whole time and then you can then yeah. be like alright time to launch an attack if I get dropped suddenly now when I'm attacking now I have spines and spores to really help me out which is going to really help me deal with it a lot better but it's not like you're making them way too early you're making them at the proper time instead so it's, it makes a lot more sense that way and then when you're when you're setting up an attack, it's always a great idea too, to if you have the moment and the and the resources which you do to spare, you could be like, all right, I'm gonna start a greater spire. I can start my old my upgrades on my ultra din. That way, if I if I deem it's a good choice to go into uh, like a remax of ultras, or I really want to go brood lords now, I can. But if I think it's the best idea here to be like, no, I'll just make Ling Bane Hydra again, then you can. And great great um. Something that should trigger you to be like, okay, I should make Broodlords would be like, if he's got a shitload of tanks or Liberators or something, and he's super, and like Planetary Fortresses, Widow Mines, he's a mega turtle. Yeah. If he's a super turtle, Broodlords are great. If he's the Terran who is really, really like all over the place, he's spreading himself out super thin, and he's just like literally trying to expand a lot. He's just, he's his army is always just never really condensed. It's just super spread. That wouldn't be a bad idea to make ultras then. You could make like six or eight ultras and then make a lot of Ling Bane with it. And it would be great. So those would be the two situations when making either one of those could could make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, if the Terran, however, though, is like, you know, uh, pretty standard and he's got like a hybrid army of like, he's he's still attacking you a bit, but he's got some liberators. He's got a really mobile army and stuff like that, but it's not really like Widowmine heavy or it's not really tank heavy. That would probably be a situation where it might be the best to go. All right, let's just stick to Ling Hydra Bane for now, because if you go Ultras, you're gonna get de like deleted by a fucking a bunch of Liberators, which is why Hydras are good but, there. So this army right now though is is Ultra. I mean, if, in this situation, cool. yeah, in this situation right now, he's got some Widow Mines, he's got yeah. a lot of Medivacs with Bio going around, and he's one planetary. Yeah, and he's still on three bases. If you went Ultras right now, it would be totally fine. It also would yeah. be a great way to spend your money. Because ultras are the complete opposite of zerglings, where they're so larva, uh, they're so expensive on your larva, and suddenly ten mm -hmm. larva could spend almost your entire bank. Mm -hmm. So yeah, making ultras right now with your current situation of your resources and the current situation of the game would be an amazing idea. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, if this Terran was making like, if these were all like liberators, and let's say he had like eight liberators already, I'd be like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Maybe that would be a great idea. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like you're again, um, biggest problem so far for you is just your, your scouting and your, your setup to the overall, you know, the point when you like max, uh, mm -hmm. if that was a little bit more clean for you here, it would, this game would not feel as complicated as it, or as, as difficult as it is right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, anyways, uh, we'll resume in three, two, one. 
forces under attack. Uh, yeah, you're just. Hey, three places at once, you know. Like... Yeah. That's <laughs> why it's it's so much easier though. Again, like you don't even need to micro your units really if you have like units just sitting there waiting already. It's really yeah. all about setup rather than control. Creep tumor under attack. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's just the the best thing I would say you could do at this point in time right now would be just to make ultras because your economy is just like continuously getting kind of like you're, yeah. you're getting overwhelmed. They're, they're and, coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another thing that's good too as well is uh, if you just take one zergling each on each side of the map and you just go when you have a moment to spare send a ling down the bottom side and check every base and send a ling on the top side and check every base and this usually should be done again before you want to send an attack out and it will give you an idea of how many bases you're, you're looking to fight against and it will also maybe give you a better idea of what location you want to attack first because if, if this guy had like let's say a really exposed base in bottom middle and also in top, more upper right and you just went for like the natural it would be a terrible place to attack because you're attacking his most fortified location the reason, the only reason why that fight went that bad for you is because of your supply in that fight that was dedicated. Like a third of your army yeah. didn't go in as well, and uh, it was also a, just a low supply army in general. Yeah. See, like, right now, imagine this, okay? Imagine this. I'm just going to pause it again at 1644. Okay. Uh, imagine if you just uh, used all your larva right now, which is, uh, it's currently zero, but these lings you just made, imagine if that was, uh, like, all, there's 14, basically. 14 possible ultras. You wouldn't actually be able to make 14, though, I don't think, but with your current supply. But uh, mm -hmm. let's just say you made, like, eight ultras, okay? Eight ultras. And eight ultras went to go reinforce your current army that was currently across the map. And then all the lings you have that are back at your base right now. And then you could remake more lings beyond that and make some of these current ones you have into banes. These lings go into like control group two, let's say. And your ultra army is like control group one or whatever the, what, you know, just two different control groups. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And then you literally tell your ultras, attack move his base. And then you look at his medevacs as soon as you tell your, your ultras to do that. And if his medevacs are currently being microed, you counter micro that. And you're like, all right, chase the medevacs. Let's go stop him from dropping my base and, and you know, wherever he's going. Kill him if he tries to drop me here and there, whatever. You focus on defending your base while your ultras are literally a moving his base down. However, okay. if his if his medevacs don't do anything and he, like when you aim move your ultras, his medevacs are just fucking chilling. They're like, well, we're not going to do anything right now because the Terran player is currently fixated on defending the ultra attack. Well, then you can be like, okay, the medevacs aren't moving. Maybe I just right-click my lings on one of them, and then that means they'll auto-follow it, so I don't really micro the situation anymore. I just set up something that will micro it for me, really basically, and then I just focus on my ultra attack because he's not really attacking me at all. Like, he's, he's, he's defending, so I should be focusing on attack. And then you focus on okay. your attack, and you're like, the whole goal you have here is keep this guy starving, and the best way you can do that is killing his third, and making sure there is no fourth base or fifth base or anything beyond that. If you keep him on two bases, you don't even necessarily have to kill him on two bases. You just have to keep him on two bases and you already won the game. Because it's okay. at almost 17 minutes, if you look at everyone's economy right now, look at his natural and look at his main. Like he's got barely anything left. And that's just kind of how it's expected. Like you're going to mine out at this point pretty hard. So if, if you deny yeah. his future mining, he cannot build anything new anyways. Uh, and if okay. he's if this Terran's at 133 supply, and you're at 119, you could very easily be almost max right now because you still have enough bank to make 10 ultras right now in terms of minerals. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which would mean your supply would be at 179 right now, if you made 10 ultras. Mm -hmm. So, it's uh, yeah, it's just 
I think you're you're getting into the too much in the sense of you're you're feeling like you're stuck on defense too long and you're being overwhelmed. And I think it's because you're for, you're putting yourself in situations where you're forcing yourself to defend everything he's doing. When if you uh, implement what we talked about already, where if you just spread your units out across your base defensively earlier on in the game, you actually don't even have to be there to defend it. Your units just defend it on their own. Yeah, I mean, I feel pinned down. Like, I have to stay home because what if a bigger drop comes in or, um, you know, it's a huge attack in and the minute, something like that. That's perfect that you said that, too, where you say, what if a bigger drop comes in? And just imagine if you had Overlord spread and Creep spread, and now you can guarantee if a bigger drop comes in. Because you yeah, see it. Yeah, definitely. True. Uh, so, yeah, like, just focus on the, for sure, focus on, like, the scouting aspects of the game and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. It's going to change a lot. Should I get, I mean, should I be getting Overlord speed? No, ne nece you do not necessarily need it. Because your Overlords are just chilling in the gaps anyways. They're not actually yeah, okay. moving around. Uh, you can get Overlord speed, though, later on when you get, like, Overseers. That's better. But the way you played out the early game with your Overlord uh, scouting usage, it was already perfect anyways. Having an Overlord mm -hmm. check to see if he's expanding at a natural and having it keep tabs on top of the natural. This, you don't need to be fast for this. This is perfect. And sneaking another one in around four minutes was great it got in it didn't get killed until you saw everything he was doing as an opener and you already got full information on his opener as a whole and that's the real only thing you would ever really want to have overlord speed for anyways is figuring out what his opener is once you know his oh, opener okay. the whole game becomes easy because here's 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 the thing okay this this is like a, this is like a tldr version of your game if i was playing it and this is what my mindset would be I would go, all right, what's he doing? Okay, figure it out. Okay, he's expanding. We can do our natural saturation. We're good. He's not doing a one base all in. Okay, scout again. Okay, he's going 2 one, one We know for sure now because we've seen it. So now I can get my third base going a bit and I can prepare for the 2 one, one He commits to it like he did. You defended it like you did. And then I'm like, all right, well, his 2 one, one failed. That means now he's got really no follow-up to this immediately. So now I'm going to be greedy and I'm going to take my, like we talked about earlier, I'm going to take my drones. I, I killed his army, which is even better now. It gives me so much breathing room here. And I'm going to saturate my fourth base. And then I'm going to max out. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I... If, that, if you did that and you just maxed out and you had your army spread to where these drops weren't fucking you, you had, you had good scouting, your build was focused on spreading out your units and your base and focusing on giving you more vision throughout the map, you would have such a less uh, such less of a problem like getting everything under control in your base. It wouldn't feel overwhelming at all. And then you would yeah. just... You would, you would max out so quick that when you attacked him, he would be like the 120 supply Terran versus a 200 supply Zerg because he did something awful, which is he threw away his army for a pressure. That's so bad. That gives you so much breathing room if you just capitalize on it. And then if you max out, he'll be like, he'll be the one that's like, oh my God, hell, the Zerg is so much supply and I can't deal with this. Like, I'm just going to die. So if they do the opposite and they realize they're going to lose that fight and they pick up everything and go back home, Am I still okay to drone up? If, I mean... if, if the Terran uh, does not lose his units and he just loads up the medevacs, it's kind of a balance then where you probably yeah. should make more lings at that point. And what you should be looking for then is you should look for, does he have a third base? If he does have a third base, you could probably squeeze in some drones for your fourth once you are guaranteeing you're going to be okay if a second timing hits you. But because the second timing might be bigger than the first timing, suddenly there might be four medevacs or something like that. Uh, if you don't kill any of the first two. But yeah. if you if you scout, there is a third base uh, from the Terran, it, like by either having a Zergling at both of his thirds, or maybe you make an Overseer and follow up a scout around six minutes or something like that, or five thirty. If you if you know if you don't know for for sure what's going on, if you see a third, you can totally drone your fourth, uh, while having enough units to defend yourself at your. So like, it, here's the thing. Okay, this is a better way to explain this. Those 26 slings you made when I was like, that's a mistake earlier on when yep. you killed the, the stuff, that would have been correct if he lost nothing, if he also didn't have a third, or even if he did have a third. I would have, I would have agreed with you making those slings if he didn't lose any of his army. And then if he does have a third after those slings, you could make drones. If he doesn't have a third, make more slings after those slings because he's going to all in you with a two base. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then, yeah. and then But the, the way the game went, though, is he took a third, and he also threw his units away. So it made a lot of sense to make drones there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. All right. I'm going to resume it in three, two, one. Are you still on times two? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm on 1651 right now. 
Watching these medevacs in front of your natural just get blown up right now. <laughs> Alright, now your, your ultras are attacking. This yeah, kind of. I don't think I'm paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, the way he built his base is like, it's just like a, a choke point funnel for the planetary. So, mm -hmm. not super great. But here's the thing, okay? I'm gonna... I'm not gonna pause it, but I'll just say... With what we see now, where he's going planetary tank Thor... Now would be a great time to go Ultras. I mean, not, not an Ultras, sorry. Uh, Broodlords. Broodlords. The Ultras are great if you can bust them when they're spreading themselves out thin. But as soon as they... This guy is now becoming a turtle. Like, it looks like he's going, like, planetaries and shit. And, uh... Yeah. He's got tanks behind walls and stuff like that. This would be a great time to go broods. I like your ultra attack in the bottom. I think this is the best way you could use this army. Right now. Yeah, I didn't want to attack into that again. Exactly. Like, the, whenever you feel like, I don't want to attack this, this is so turtly. That's when you yeah. should be making Broodlord. And now he's even going Liberator. You're actually making a Greater Spire, so you have the right yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, I do go into Broodlord. This game gets pretty crazy. Um, so after a certain point, we can stop. I do end up winning. Um, it, it gets turned into a base race. Sure. I shouldn't have won. <laughs> the the biggest thing, I'm going to pause it right now at 1934, and okay. just, I want you to quickly look at your bases, and I want you to tell me what you think you should be oh, doing right now. The saturation, by far. Okay. Six, uh, 16 out of 8 on the 4th, the 3rd, and uh, probably, oh, I did take another base. Saturate that, too. Okay. Um, I agree with you. And, uh. um... I I think uh, I think your army movement was perfect. Uh, not the first time when you took the planetary, that would have honestly was kind of a waste. But you, like you said, you probably weren't paying attention to it. Um, yeah. But the ba the one at six o'clock, you scouted for another base. You saw something that was really greedy, but also at the same time really risky for the Terran, and you punished him for mm -hmm. it. You just killed it. Perfect. Yeah. Now I love it that your army is not just going to suicide. It should totally be defensive right now. It should be just chilling. And your biggest priority right now should 100% be getting your economy saturated, like you said. Like, your main is no drones because of the Liberator earlier. Your natural is pretty yep. empty as well. Your third, your, your base to the right of that is oversaturated because it's mining out. Your base below that is also a, it's mildly oversaturated because it is also mining out. Your fresh base has nothing. So, yeah, getting your mineral lines fixed, super important right now. And I would even take, like, another base, and I would try to get my saturation back up to, like, in the 80, like, in the realm of 80 drones. Mm -hmm. While just looking at the Terran's bases that are future bases with, like, let's say I would leave, like, one Zergling at his 6 o'clock. One Zergling at, like, the base right to the top left of his main, uh, where he's currently got an orbital flying above it right now. And another yeah. Zergling to, like, the like the 2 o'clock base or something, like, right above the 3 o'clock. Like, it's, okay. it's, it's got a command center that's going to be built at it with all these SCVs transferring to it. You don't have to have your whole mm -hmm. army there. Just, like, one Zergling. And the reason why yeah, is because... Just... I go, wait, what are you going to say? Just to see if they're going to take it? I mean... Yeah, well, or... here's the thing. In this game right now, if I were to, if I were to tell you to go to your vision, okay? Like, uh, vision of, of you, so number one. Do you yeah. feel like you're ahead? Do you feel like you're behind? If you don't see the supply as well, you just you're having to assume your position. If you were playing this game, how would you feel? Oh, I felt like I was behind by far. Okay. Because of my all the all the drones I'm missing, I'm at what forty six drones. Sure. Um, yeah, that's that definitely makes me feel behind. But what would you base uh, that off of as well? Would you base that off just because your drones are dead? Like, yeah, and all the pressure that's been put on me, and I don't feel like I did a lot of damage to. Sure. But at all. when you um, think, when, but you like, if you think about it in terms of like, you're, you, if you only really base how ahead or behind you are in a game off of how much damage you have sustained, it's not entirely 100% accurate because you don't know where your opponent's at. And some people mm. wait, some people are more all in than you realize. And if you had a Zergling at all of his extra expansions, like the, the three potential ones, the one you just killed and the two other ones right next to his base, and you were to say to yourself, wow, this guy's on three bases and I'm on five. As long as you get your economy fixed, it's not as bad as it seems. Like, you, you actually have a realistic gauge of where he's at. If you know his base count. Yeah, yeah. So knowing his base count tells you so much more information about, like, what you should be doing. And if you're, at th if you're on five bases and you saturate that quickly, and he's on three, you should not be the one feeling like you have to end the game to attack because you're otherwise going to lose. It should be the other way around. The Terran should be the one that's like, fuck, the Zerg is actually just, like, actually outmining me right now. And... I'm going to lose the game. And the big reason why, the biggest reason of all why it'd be such a good feeling for you as Zerg 
if you know he's on, only on three bases at the moment, is because we're at 20 minutes almost. In the, we're at 1934, but we're almost at 20 minutes. And you guarantee, you can fucking guarantee his main and his natural are not mining anymore. So he's really only mining right. on one base, which is not good. That's pretty shitty. That's a terrible economy. So what that tells you is if you, if you just tell yourself, okay, this turn's economy sucks, and if I can just keep him, if I can keep starving him, if I can be like, okay, he's trying to take a new base, and it's exposed, maybe I'll test the waters with my, my actual army then and go over there, and if he somehow gets in position to defend it, then I'll let him have it. But if he doesn't get in position to defend it fast enough, I might kill it. I might just wreck another group of SCVs and uh, maybe another command center if he doesn't lift it off immediately. Like, you have the potential to fuck his economy over even harder without being super committal with your army. And then, if you can keep him starving longer and longer and longer, if you just make an army that's going to most likely win in a like a like the one big fight, all you have to win at that point is one fight and you win the game. Which is, I love it that you're going Broodlords against now a Terran who's transitioning into mech. Because Broodlords yeah, are going to just wreck that shit super hard. Oh yeah, yeah. So no, it, I just having map control i don't i know i have you know zerglings and i have all these units that can take map control really easily but i never really seem to have it you know it's not about like map control is two things or like it's okay that's not really necessary i, mean, I, I guess think, i kind of have it right now but i i think you're i think you're kind of lumping map awareness into map control and it's not about mm -hmm. killing the command center entirely like if he if he takes it and he's going to defend it that's okay it's not the end of the world but it gives you the uh, it gives you the ability to know what he's capable of doing if you have a zergling at his expansion because if he doesn't have a base there which he currently doesn't have any bases there you should like it makes the game more of a like you understand what's happening a lot more and if i if i were you and you in your position and i was like okay this turns on three bases still i would not feel I, I, as fucked as you seem to be if you only look at your side of the map and you're like oh my god i just lost 53 drones throughout this game a lot of my bases are so messed up right now. It feels terrible, right? But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah, even. Definitely. Not even kidding. You have. Uh, you don't have a lot of larva right now, so it's that's going to take a little bit longer. But in terms of saturation for your current base counts, your five bases with what current resources you have, you could fix that saturation in less than ten seconds. Oh yeah. You could be like drones at my fourth base, drones at my third base, go to my fifth base, drones at my main. I'm going to make new ones, and then the next the next drones I can make, I'll make them for my natural, and then you know. Now, suddenly, your main's pretty well saturated, your national's pretty well saturated, your third and fourth are optimally saturated, and your fifth base is pretty well saturated. And then you, you can keep making drones from there, but, like, you can fix the majority of your problem right now in literally, like, ten seconds, and then already, if you fix your problem of your current economy, if just with that, spending six drones on larva and fixing your current saturation, you'd be mining better than the Terran. If you look at it right now, you look at the hit I on the keyboard, you're still mining better than the Terran, even on his... Uh, even on the way your shit's all messed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's because his main and natural are mined out. So he's got, like, nothing to work with, really. Okay. So uh, it, yeah, that makes sense. It, it gives you so much more of a realistic gauge of the game and where you're at if you just know your opponent's base count. Yeah, just slow down and think, basically. Yeah, like, it... it yeah. Uh, basically, another way to look at it, too, is every... If, it, if your opponent takes a base, okay... If you can do it, make a like. If you get used to doing this, try to your best to make like a mental note in your head that is uh, like, okay, he took an expansion, and I, I'm not going to be able to kill that right now. And if I somehow can't kill it the entire game, I just know that for about 13 minutes, that base is going to be mining really well. And then after 13 minutes is gone, that base is going to be pretty much dry. So if your opponent right now takes, uh, let's say, let's say your opponent right now takes a fourth base. You have a Zergling that gets, that gets killed at it, okay? And it, the, the Command Center lands. It's now... We'll just... we'll just You don't have to be the exact number here. We'll just do an estimate of, okay, around 20 minutes. You can just know that if you can keep this Terran defensive on on that four bases now, up until 33 minutes, he's starving again. Like, he's legit out of money again. And he won't be mining the most optimally anyways as well because, you know, he's really, not really mining on full saturation of what he wants anyways, even if he takes that base. Ideally, you want to have like three bases running the entire time, and he, he, it's impossible for him right now if he only takes that base. It would be two bases mining. So, mm -hmm. it um, you know, if if you can't kill it, and you're like, this guy just won't die. It's so it's so turtly. I cannot break that. It's super hard to break this. Containing him and make waiting for him to push out into you and taking advantageous fights for yourself would be better. Then, 
And then you just kill his army over and over. And he has to keep rebuilding all of his re uh, army with the money he currently has. And he will run out of money because at 33 minutes, he's, he's broke again. Mm -hmm. So patience is a big thing. And understanding what your opponent is capable of is huge. And knowing that each base your opponent takes is another 13 minutes of the game that they can have money to work with. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, it's just slowing it down and understanding where he's at is huge. Anyways, I'll uh, I'll start it up again in three, two, one, and then yeah, spreading your creep too would be great right now as well because there's really not a lot going on. You you should really not be the one looking to force fights, unless you can kill fresh bases. Mm -hmm. So you should feel. I tend to neglect that the first thing I the first thing I neglect when you know all these drops are coming in and there's so much going on I, I just forget. Yeah. There just wouldn't be so much going on though if your army was split. Like the army that's currently sitting in the middle of the map, if that army was split between your bases as well, it would feel easy. I think just lack of setup is giving you this overwhelmed feeling. Yeah. But at least now you have an idea though. Like of yeah, definitely. Yeah. a better way to set up your base and stuff like that. Because look, look at the fourth base of his, of his right now. It's uh, orbital. It's not defended at all. And if you if you had your army figure that out because the Zergling was there, and you just went over and just wiped it out really quick with the ultras, you don't even have to commit to his yeah. third base. You just wipe out his economy to his fourth, and now he's broke again. You sh you should always the the best way to describe it is you should always feel panicked if you have no idea what your current opponent is capable of doing. But the way to fix that is to scout his base scout. Okay. Because when you scout his base scout, he will undoubtedly reveal his composition as well. Mm. And, it, 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 like, your choices and how you dealt with his compositions have been great this game, by the way. The, the choice of when you made ultras, I agree. I agreed with it. You just didn't make enough. And your choice of when yeah. you made Broodlords was great, but I also think, once again, you probably didn't make enough. But the only problem, or the only difference between your Ultras now, or back then, and your Broodlords now, is you had enough money to make a lot more Ultras than you did. But now you're actually kind of broke in your Mineral Department, so you don't have enough yeah. to make more Broodlords, so I can understand that one. Should I have gone Broodlord and Corruptor, or Broodlord yep. Hydra? Yes, Broodlord Corruptor. As soon as you go into Broodlord, you should definitely be going Corruptor with it, especially if your opponent has Liberator. Okay. With Viking too? Yep. Broodlord supplement, uh, they're like, this like a good supporting unit for the, uh... Corruptor are great for the Broodlord when they're mixed together, especially when it's an air battle. Because Hydras get zoned out by so many more things, and... Like, if your opponent has Siege Tanks or Liberator, Hydras are just gonna get destroyed. They're gonna be so inefficient. So, I mean, from here, it just turns into a mess. If you want to go into the other one, or... Yeah, 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 we can look, uh, we can look at the other one. This one's kind of over. It's, yeah. if, uh, the, if the ideas that we had for, uh, what's it called, um, uh, the, the stuff we kind of just went over throughout the whole game, if some of those things were implemented, that game could have ended a long time for you winning the game. Oh, yeah. Definitely, I mean, it, it's just so much pressure and I don't feel like I'm fast enough or, I mean I know people I have decent well, APM but I mean here, it's getting here, better here's but. here's the thing okay you just, you just gotta think about the game you gotta like here okay hold, hold, I don't wanna say this I'm gonna say this a different way <laughs> um when you play against a player the worst way you can look at the game is waiting for them to do something and then going shit react to it now and instead, you should, when you play a game, especially since you scouted, you should look at what they're doing and go, what is this guy most likely going to do with what he's doing? For instance, mm -hmm. your opponent, you scouted a 2-1-1 and he expanded. So as a reaction to that, you should tell yourself, okay, well, if he's going to go 2-1-1, I'm pretty, pretty solid, pretty safe. I don't have to really worry about, you know, like this, like really fast tank push in my face or something like that or dying really early to some scv pull like it's really unlikely that's 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 the kind of thing he's going to do what he's going to do is he's probably going to drop you with medevacs and knowing that information already going okay yeah, medevac drops that's what we can expect well then your goal should be 
your playstyle should immediately shift into, okay, I need to deal with drops. And dealing with drops means trying to be under the medevacs before they drop. That's the best way to deal with medevacs. And the best way to do that is to give yourself vision as to where they're coming from. So your goal then should have been creep spreading as fast as you can, making sure overlords are spread really well, and then having lings there before he's there. And you can do all this before the attack even happens. So like, it's not Shit. like... Oh, what's up? Should I put on, be putting on more pressure too? No, I mean, you don't need to. Like literally, you don't even need to attack him ever. You can. I'm not even kidding, dude. You can win all of your games up to Masters League, defending everything, and then just launching one big counter when your opponent makes a mistake. Okay. Like you're playing a macro game. You're going. You're the guy. You are the guy going for drones. You have no reason why you have to attack. When you get really good at multitasking and stuff like that, um, launching counter attacks will. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to talk to you, but this fucking Egon thing is really annoying and distracting. Uh, okay, we're good. Uh, so when you get really good, and like we're talking like when you're really comfortable with everything and it's no longer like an overwhelming feeling, you can then get by with being like, all right, I can be like, it now seems like a good time to launch a counterattack with Lings because I know it is a good chance it's going to ruin his economy. Uh, and I can also simultaneously defend his attack. That's advanced. That is, that is advanced StarCraft 2. And that's stuff that'll come much later. For now, all you should be worried about is getting a good economy and controlling that economy uh, by not dying in the process. And part of not dying is partly scouting and seeing what your opponent can do and what he's capable of doing, which is what we kind of covered that game as well. And the other part of not dying is understanding uh, your situation and what you need to be doing to defend what's happening currently. The best thing you could have done there was your, your build was on the right track for a while other than the gas. Uh, for the opener, and then you scouted he was going medevacs, you prepared a defense for it, you owned his medevac drop really hard, but then you never continuously defended the idea of more medevacs, which again, we we, we have a lot of this stuff already, so we're just going to be repeating ourselves, but uh, yeah. going into defense against that would have been the best way to do that, and letting your opponent literally, like if your opponent drops your main, and then he's like, all right, I'm going to do three drops at once. Just to throw this out there, every Terran who does three drops at once that's in Platinum is not going to micro all three drops at the same time. Yeah. What what they're doing is they're dropping three drops at once and they're hoping that you're going to fall apart. And they're going to be like, oh, look, there's nothing in the main base. I'm going to stim pack and move it into the mineral line. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the natural, which has already been dropping the whole time as well. Oh, look, this drop is not being defended either. I'm going to stim pack it and attack the drones over there. But if you just have units in position because you're like, okay, this guy's playing a drop style. I'm going to prepare for drops because I'm being defensive anyways. If my opponent goes for one big fat attack in the front of my base, and I'm like, oh, that's a big army. I see you walking on my creep. Well, you don't have to fin drops anymore. If he's got everything committed to the front of your base, if it's like six minutes and he's got like five medevacs with a bunch of bio and like three tanks inside that push in front of your base, you can tell yourself, okay, this army is huge and I need everything to defend it because this is, this is everything. And you can defend it. But if his army in front of, your, if in front of your base is like one medevac and like one widow mine, well, you can be like, okay, I don't need my whole army to defend this, and I can spread my army around. Mm -hmm. And then if your army spread around and your opponent's like, I'm dropping you here, I'm dropping you there, I'm also going to drop you over here, and I'm going to push the front. <laughs> Suddenly it's like, the Terran's like, oh, let's go to my drop in the natural. It's all dead. Let's go to my drop in the main. Oh, that's all dead too. Yeah. Let's go to my drop in the third. I'm watching it currently unload Marines into their death as well because the Zerg just spread his units out. And suddenly you're the one that's like, this is so fucking easy. I'm not even microing this, and it's like my units are just winning. So I don't know the build well enough to where after a certain point, do they stop dropping or is it uh, it's just different every time? It depends on the player. It depends on the player. Yeah. Some Terrans are like, I'm going to drop the entire game. And some Terrans yeah. will, uh, um, they'll drop a couple times and then try to do a push. But the beautiful thing about all of it though, is if you defend the drops initially really well and you, you get your economy going, like you can do the build, like we talked about, you can perform it mm -hmm. rel relatively well. If your opponent loses one drop, that's already 10 supply now that he's going to be behind when you do your timing. Two drops, 20 supply, three drops, 30 supply. The more drops he wastes, the easier it's going to be for your timing to win the game. And your timing should be when you max and you just go for a big Ling Hydrobane push when you do that shove finally. And the, the better you get your defense just by spreading it out, the faster you'll get to that timing. And the faster you get there, the more likely you're just going to literally crush him. Okay. You'll actually, if you get, if you get good at it, you'll just win games off that entirely. Like, like your Terran opponents will just die. 
I mean, it's when they turtle up is is when I have the issue with winning with it, with the uh, hydroling vein. I mean, That's when you go broodlord. Yeah. When they when they turtle, yeah, you I just mean, add is there broods? a certain time limit where I need to have this tier three units? I mean, so here's the thing: if you're like remember when I was talking about your upgrade timings, how in your gas? So I was like, okay, so you, when you start your gas is three, four, five, and six, you start evil chambers, you get one one right away. When you start when you start two two upgrades. You start an infestation pit. When infestation when infestation pit is done, you start a hive because that will time it out for three three, as well when your hive. You will also be able to start a spire when you start a hive, because if your economy is this good, like we're talking about, you will easily be able to afford all of this. This is why I'm telling you also to build two macro hatches. Mm -hmm. And then when you start a when you start a spire, at the same time when you start a hive, you can start three three when your hive is done, and you could also start a greater spire when your hive is done. Your first max attack of Hydroling Bane could go attack him. And if it wins the game, well, the game's over. If it does not yeah. win the game and you're like, this guy is so turtly, you could you could be like, all right, let's. right, I lost 30 supply. I'll pull back with the rest of my army because I'm not breaking this. And uh, make Broodlords now. I'll make like 10 Broodlords. And then the next time I... And then I'll just be defensive until my Broodlords are done. And then I'll go attack him again when my Broodlords are out. And if the Terran yeah, yeah. drops me again, I'm doing. I'm going back to that whole defense style where I'm spreading my army out. I'm just absorbing his attacks. I'm spreading my creep. If he pushes with everything on his army on my creep, and I'm like, oh, that's a big frontal push again. Well, then I can group everything up again, and I can deal with that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you should you should always make Broodlord Greater Spire as a backup plan, even if you don't know if you're going to need it. Okay. So it's it's like you're doing preparations before it's too late. It's the same exact thing like we're talking about. With when uh, I'm telling you to spread your units around, you're expecting your opponent to take the next step with you, but if he doesn't, you just suddenly get a free win. Okay. I mean, should I be doing that? Should I have the option to tech into anything? I mean, should I throw down an Ultralisk Cavern too? I mean, yeah, you totally can. That kind of stuff. Yeah. You're going to have enough money to do that. And uh, the Ultralisk, like I said, would be great if the Terran's super widespread and he doesn't have an excessive yeah. amount of tanks or Liberators. But it's not going to hurt me of going and, you know, it's putting all that extra income into, you know, buildings. It's not that much. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, the, the bigger thing that's going to hurt your economy a lot more is taking attacks of inefficient armies and repeatedly and then remaking those armies and doing it again. Mm. Like, it's way more Should expensive. Double upgrading on Aspire? Should I double no. no, 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 no. When you get Aspire, if you're going to go Ling Bane Hydra into Spire into broodlord corruptor carapace every time doesn't matter uh, unless the terran is going full-fledged like thor based mech then weapon upgrades are fine uh or like i guess if it's like cyclone or thor based mech then weapon is fine but if it's anything else if it's if it's any type of bio or anything besides thor cyclone carapace okay and if it if it ultimately ends up being mech as well i wouldn't actually mind if you got double spire then but if it's if it's the big one is I'm kind of basing it off last game. If it's bio for the longest time, mm -hmm. single spire is totally fine, and you just get carapace. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any other questions so, so far? Next one. No, no. Okay. Uh, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, this next one though, I lose pretty bad. Um, I think they're quite a bit better than me. But um, uh, I I go roach hydra infester, and it always seems like my infester is just just kind of water around and die. <laughs> okay. I think I can get off a couple fungals, but um, but yeah. Sure. Um, I lose pretty bad, so it just seems like they're they're kiting me so much that I never really hit, and um, it's kind of just a mess. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it on times two again, and I'm gonna start it in three, two, one. Yeah, we'll uh we'll we'll look at it, dude. I'll probably make this one go a little bit faster, though, than last one. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. It's cool. Um, I probably won't pause it this time. I'll just watch it all the way through. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to probably quickly talk about your economy again at first if I see more of the same. Even if it's the same thing, just because it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it is the most important thing out of everything. If your economy is not proper, everything gets thrown off really hard. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sometimes that I change it up. <laughs> See <laughs> no. what works. <laughs> uh, your build's fine so far. 
Uh, you are doing the same thing with your Overlord, though. I, uh, yep. I always recommend, you know, just in case, because if the SCV goes into fog and he builds a bunker, you would, you would have to then be de dealing with a bunker that's already done, which would suck. Yep. Because there's no guarantee the Terran's always going to proxy in the same spot, which is why it's kind of risky to scout like that. Okay. Because, uh, actually, a, a big thing to tell you is if the Terran actually proxied where your first Overlord passed, your first Overlord would already be gone by the time he proxies you. Oh, really? Yeah. It's because he has to build the depot and then he has to bring us if he's across the map and then build the barracks, and by then your Overlord will have easily gone to, like, the high ground. If he, or if, if, what if he built like on the top of the high ground above your fourth base? It's like barely out of vision as well. Even if from the overlord where the pathing went. Yeah. And a lot of maps have a lot of different range of places you can hide shit. Nice reaper kill, dude. <laughs> but this is another big thing too. He's building a bunker again. So this is like a that safety feeling for you. Where you shouldn't really feel too pressured. Um, okay. I... I think for this game particularly, you're going for a really you're still mining gas. You're going for a really quick layer. And you went for an Evo chamber. And uh this build just seems awkward. Just gonna throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Uh I like we're gonna see what you do with your You're going for roach ro roaches, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I wanted plus one missile. Okay, you're going for roaches and speed. Uh Okay. A little different. Um No speed? I'm sure you're, you're probably gonna get it. I usually at some point. just go for speed just in case they go for uh, bio build, and then um, just don't end up not using it. I guess. The only thing about this build again is I think it would be if your plan is to go Roach Hydra uh, or something like that. I think you'd just be better off going for a slightly delayed layer because if we look at the layer, it's once again ruined your mineral income because you're mining so much gas so early. You're on four gases again really fast, or you're on three, but you were yeah. mining the one really early too. It delays your third. You're at six minutes and you haven't had a single drone yet. Go to your third. And we haven't done anything with the layer yet. You made a hydrogen, and now you're making a couple hydras, but unupgraded hydras are, like I said before, they're like the worst shit ever. Yeah. So delaying your hydras, you would just get so many more of them. Like, here's another way to explain this. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to pause it this time really quick at 629 just, okay. to, just to explain this uh, mentality. If you rush a layer, you can get like five hydras or like six hydras faster than if you don't rush a layer so your initial hydras are going to be there and if you think about what what would be the good of that what, what, would, what would come of that that is really great the only thing i can honestly think of that hydras without upgrades would be good against would be like banshees like what you're fighting against right now for instance but you're to you don't even have a problem dealing with banshees though if you just make a spore crawler and a couple of queens like that easily shits on banshees as well anyways because if you're fighting anything else Bunch of bio, uh, hellbat timings, uh, just hellions in general. You'd be so much better off having roaches, lings, or banes than unupgraded hydras. Like hy hydras suck ass uh, without upgrades, pretty hard. Like they're really awful. Um, and then again, the only thing they excel at dealing with, even without upgrades, is it could also be dealt with even, probably even better. I would say honestly, queens would be even better at dealing with banshees than hydras too. Like there's a better alternative than hydras we, we, if we're talking about low supply of things in every yeah. way and now if you and now so like again rushing a layer is going to get you like to five or six hydras faster than if you don't rush a layer but if you don't rush a layer and you go for economy first you will get to like higher supplies faster so the guy who does not rush a layer will actually get to like 20 hydras faster than the guy who does rush a layer if that makes really? sense okay because you can make more of them because the way zerg works is if I delay my, my economy, or sorry, if I uh, if I delay my, my tech is what I meant to say. If I'm the guy making economy and I'm like, yeah, fuck it, let's make a lot of drones. Well, if you look at the income tab right now, my economy right now, instead of at six and a half minutes, instead of being 1,700 minerals and 650 gas, it would be like 2,600 minerals and like 900 gas. And then now I'm just, I'm making more every minute than you would be at this point. And now suddenly I can inject all three of my hatcheries and I can make a big round of hydras rather than making little bit by little by little by little hydros over time. Okay. Because the way, the way you're thinking about Zerg when you think about it like that is the way Terrans and Protosses should think when they're like, I got to maximize my, I got to get my tech quickly and maximize my immortal production so I can make, so I can have like 10 immortals by this point in time. 
But Zerg is like, oh, I can just delay my tech, make more economy, and then just... Make, it'd be like the equivalent of being like, I'm going to make like six robos at once and then make 12 immortals within fucking 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Protoss doesn't do that because it's really inefficient, but Zerg can do that because of the way the larva works. Okay. So delaying your economy... Is, or de Yeah, delaying your economy is not a great idea if you're going to go for a macro game. The only time okay. it, it really makes sense is if you're rushing a layer for something really, really aggressive, like you're going to go for a Nidus. It's the, sa it's the same logic as if taking the gas after you get Ling Speed only really makes sense if you're going to go for like a Roach All-In with the Lings or like a Baneling All-In or something like that. Okay. Makes sense. All right, I'm going to resume it in three, two, one. Alright, and then, uh, hey, um, so yeah, you're pretty committed into the Roach Hydra Avenue, it looks like, like you're going into Infestation Pit now, I imagine you're probably going to go Hive, is this going to be like a Viper thing as well? Uh, uh, Infester. You, so you could just go Roach Hydra Infester? Um, yeah, I think I... I don't remember the end, but I mean, I I mostly lose with that army. Okay, I actually don't mind you going infestors uh, against Hylian Cyclone. Against Hylian Cyclone, though, you'd be better off again not even going Hydras at all. I'm just gonna throw it out there. You'd be better oh, off. Really? Yeah, Hydras kind of. They're good in certain situations, but against this, they're pretty shitty. Their only reason why is because they're really expensive and they die really easy. You'd be better off going Roaches and infestors and you just fungal growth his cyclones you blow them up easily with roaches and suddenly you have way more roaches than you would if you had roach hydra Ro like a hydra is just super pricey uh yeah. and you don't even need to have that many roaches either you could have like 30 roaches and four infestors and you could beat like 10 cyclones and 20 hillions no ravagers no ravagers And what this would do is it would open up your uh, your economy again more to build better things. And yeah. against mech, if, if the game does not end early, you're almost always better off going for like a spire. Okay. Uh, just because like mech is so difficult to engage into, especially when it's like planetaries, tanks, sensor towers, it's just it's just a fucking nightmare to engage in that if you're going pure ground. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I would I would highly recommend going into a spire. And you are going what's into Spire. Trick, what's the trick to go in uh, with these investors? Because landing a fungal is. Okay. Pause it again really quick. Easy. Okay. I, I paused it at 1104. All right. You want to know the secret to fucking investors, dude? <laughs> you want to know the trick? I do. Okay. So here's what you got to do you got to put that shit in two control groups. <laughs> <It's> uh <-oh>. like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to. The reason why. There's why. Okay. If you leave. Your infestors in one control group with roaches and hydras. What's going to happen is a infestor does not walk as fast as a hydra or a roach. It's always going to be behind those units, especially since they have speed upgrades and an infestor doesn't. And if those units, if, if your infestors are always behind your roaches and hydras, what's going to happen is is if your army concaves out where you're like on a move, your infestors are never going to be in range to fungal properly because your front line is blocking them from getting there. And this, again, this will always happen if you're A-moving your whole army around left and right. Unless, like, it's some weird pathing around a cliff, like, kind of what you have going on here. Um, but notice how your your investors that are are in the back, they're there because they've been following your Roach Hydra around for a while. But that's how it's always going to be. They're always going to be in the back. Uh, I think this new one that's here probably just spawned recently and it has weird pathing. Yeah. Um, anyways, putting them in their own control group is huge. And what you want to do is you want to be patient, okay? I like... You have vision of where he is. He's on creep. It's not like you don't know where he is. So what you can do is you can let him be the one who's impatient, and he's the one who takes a fight. If you just sat, if you if you like told your army, for instance, to sit on the high ground of where it just was, and then as the Terran comes closer to you, you let him come to you. You don't you don't try and time it to where you're like, I'm gonna slam into him here. I'm trying to a move, a move, a move, get over to him as fast as I can. Just fucking wait. Just be like, all right, he's coming towards me. I see him coming. He's going to keep coming. 
It's totally fine. I'm not really in a rush here. I just want to get a good fungal. As soon as he gets close enough to be fungled, you're controlling your infester group, and you say, infestors, fungal. You land a juicy-ass fungal because you've let him come to you. Then you move they, your... Then they you chase at all? No, no, no. Well, then you, once you then cast a the fungal on his army, then you can A-move his entire army. With, with Not okay. with everything with the, you have, but with your Roach Hydra, because it's in a separate yeah. control group. And once you say, Roach Hydra, A-move, well, now it's on A-move. Uh, when you get more advanced, I will tell you to do more than that. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you what I would what I would say for this in a second, but let me explain how you should micro it right now just to get used to it. You fungal once, you then A move Roach Hydra, and you forget about Roach Hydra. You, you've A moved towards his army, it's just going to do its thing. You then go back to your Infestor group, and you move your Infestors at a safe distance, but also a distance to fungal him continuously. Okay. So you're not walking into his entire army with, like, Infestors are popping left and right as they're getting in melee range. They're staying safe distance, but they're still in fungal range. So you just go, okay, fungal's almost over. Two seconds has gone by. I'm going to throw a third fungal out because it's a three-second spell. And that third last second is about the time it's going to take for my projectile to get on his army and land again. Okay. So, like, literally, you just go one, two, fungal. One, two, fungal. One, two. That's all you fucking do. You just keep your investors yeah. fungling one by one. And once you've broken his army enough to go... Okay, this, we just kind of shit on his units. This is a really good fight for us. Then you can go back to doing what you're doing before, and it doesn't matter. Okay. And but fungling, if I fungled before the two seconds, it's not going to do anything, right? It's all stack. fungal does is it resets. Yeah, it does not yeah. stack. It just resets itself. Yeah. So if you fungal, like, fungal, 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 it'll be like one second, one second, one second, one second, and then two, three. It won't actually do anything. It'll just waste yeah. your time on the previous fungals. Uh, and it, it's really easy too. Once you kind of like take it a little bit more like patiently and break it down a little bit and see it happening, it's so fucking easy to land a second and a third and a fourth fungal if you land your first one because the units move so fucking slow. Yeah. So, yeah. That'd be great for you to do that. Um, like, like that. I would say, honestly, if, you, if you're really uncomfortable with multiple control groups... At the bare minimum, if you're going to use Infestors, at least put those in their separate one, and then you can put your entire rest of your army in one control group. Okay. Um, yeah, you'd be so much better off, because Infestors are so good if you just use them properly. Uh, and That's don't the same thing as Vipers too, right? Separate control group. I would recommend it, but it's... Yeah, okay. If, we're, if, if you're going uh, Viper separate control group and Infestor separate control group, by themselves, it's not that hard if it's just like you have two groups. But if you have them combined where it's like, you have Roach Hydra on one, Infestors on two, Vipers on three. Suddenly that's also really hard. That's like super advanced. A lot of like GM players can't even handle Vipers and Infestors together, like microing them separately. Um, but with, with their, when they're both alive at the same time is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyways. Okay. To elaborate uh, one last time on this, the, the micro one, I was like, I'm not going to tell you to do the advanced part of this, but, it, but if you get good at it, this is something you could work towards. The most optimal way to micro this current situation that we just talked about would be let the Terran player come towards you, wait for that juicy fungal, and then you rotate your control groups where you go like this. Uh, fungal growth, it lands. Roach Hydra, A move in. Go back to Infestors. Fungal growth again, it lands. Roach Hydra, move for a second into his army so you don't concave. You Instead, you get really up into his face and then A move again. Go back to Infestor. Fungal growth again. Go back to Roach Hydra. Move into him again. A move. So you keep maximizing your damage so your units aren't just like shooting one outer cyclone. And they're all concaving oh. against it. They're like... It's kind of similar to like when you see a Zerg micro against like Blink Stalkers. They don't just A move it and let the Blink Stalkers micro against them all day. You just shove into them over and over and over. And you get on top of them again and again so they can't really like continuously kite you. And cyclones are all about kiting you as well. So that's why it works there really well. Okay. That's ca it's kind of advanced though, so don't practice that right away. I would yeah, say get, get used right. to practicing infestors first, and then once you get that down, then you can try doing that because it does complicate okay. things a lot more. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna hit play again in three, two, one. But yeah, the big thing about uh, Hellion Cyclone, though, is it just wants to, like, lock on you and then kite you all day and run away and get, like, good trades. And the reason why it works is because this army is super mobile, and it's all about keeping you defensive while they expand, and they take more money than you. 
Which is kind of what's starting to happen. Almost. Yeah, I can see him doing that, yeah. So I like that you have the investors, and if you just... If you notice, every time you take a fight with the Cyclones, you're always colliding with him when he's colliding with you. You're, like, shoving into him front to front. And you can see where he's going, though, on creep. And if you just let him commit on your creep into a fungal first, he can't run away then. Oh, okay. It's so important. Like, what we just the, the whole micro idea we just talked about. Like, look, you're colliding with him first. You got one Infestor and then a fungal in front. The Infestors died because they're in the front. And then he gets away. But, like, look at him come again. Maybe. 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 Yep. Uh, he's trying to set up two groups. Uh, here we go. Now he's coming again. Imagine if you had, like, three Infestors on the side of that scan where he couldn't see it yet. Uh, and then you just fungal. You caught him in a fungal, and once you catch him in a fungal, he started trying to run away, which you then chained it and had your army A moving on top of him. Rather than showing your army first, giving him the ability to then run away, and then your Infestors are never catching a fungal. That's why it's so important. Positioning of your investors are pretty huge. Investors are also really hard to use, by the way, though, and uh, planning. It's something I never really recommend for people to use, but there is actually I'm no... I'm trying to practice, like, neurals and stuff, and it's just... Yeah. In fact, they're, they, they definitely are. They're, they're a unit yeah. that I would say Diamond League players, honestly, would even struggle a lot using them. Like, Masters players would be probably the the best starting area for a good, like, Spellcaster usage. Mm -hmm. But... The shitty thing about it, though, is there's really nothing better against Hellion Cyclone. Like, Infestors yeah. are gods against that composition, so I totally would approve of it in this particular uh, situation. Okay, I'm gonna pause it really quick one more time. I'm actually gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna go back to 16 minutes and four seconds. Okay. All right, and now I wanna tell you about the situation here. In this particular situation, you have brood lords, you have hydras, you have infestors, and you have a bunch of cyclones, hellions, turrets, and a planetary. This, this base is super annoying to attack uh, at first because there's some static D that's going to grab aggression of your units. It's going like, to like take the hits for a while. He's got a pretty decent amount of Cyclones here that can con continuously lock onto you. The best way you could micro this fight would be telling you... You could literally just green box it with your mouse if you don't want to use separate control groups for this. You could just green box your Broodlords and say, Broodlords, attack the area. Like, you could attack move the ground up between where the two top turrets are above his planetary just in the center of the area and then have your hydras just chill where they are right now like right under the broodlords where they would be right like at the, like the base of the ramp basically mm -hmm. and you just wait and then you just let him commit to you it's again letting him come to you to catch a fungal the biggest mistake i think a lot of zerg players make when they try to use infestors is they try to force a fungal aggressively when it's a thousand times easier to catch a fungal on your opponent defensively. Let them charge you first, and then you fungal it as he comes to you. Rather than trying to get a fungal when your infestors are like derping out behind the rest of your units being like, we're not in range yet, hold on! And he's yeah. moving away, and you're like, oh, I missed a fungal again. Because all you're going to do then is you're going to bleed your army out before the fight even really starts. Mm -hmm. So, okay. having your hydras, when you go, when you get to Broodlords, having your hydras just kind of chill and be just, just wait would make it so much easier for you. And then, uh... Okay. And then, yeah, once you land a fungal, then, again, you could be like, alright, now let's go attack. And this is because it's a planetary. If that was an orbital, would you say just... If this was an orbital, I would I would say your hydras should uh, still not overextend. They should not chase the army. They should stay in the, they should stay in the vicinity of your broods at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, because, like, if you think about it like this, okay? If you shove your hydras forward, you're only attacking... You're making the fight start about, like, four seconds or something before it would start otherwise, if your Broodlords were there. But you're bleeding out your units that don't need to be bled out. Like, against his composition, I would never overextend my Hydras. If I have Hydras. 
the whole point of the investor that makes it good is you don't like as soon as your opponent engages you they cannot retreat from you so allowing him to make that choice where he's like oh my my orbital is gonna die i gotta defend it let's go defend it oh i'm fungled he's that's gonna happen the only yeah. the only time that's not gonna happen is if he decides you know what fuck it i'm gonna let that base die but you still get to kill a free base out of it so there's no okay. downside for you if you just play it a little bit more patiently all right, I'm gonna hit play in three, two, one, uh, right now. Just watch the uh, watcher hydras though. They just, they just like dive, and you just lost like half your hydras, or maybe like two thirds yeah. of your hydras out there. And the broodlords are kind of just chilling. Yeah, I think I'm trying to target down the Vikings. In a situation like this, though, on it, like, I actually think with your current in platinum and the, currently how this is going, I honestly could see you just going master Hydra again and again and again, and just winning the game as well. Like, it's not gonna work like that forever, but if this was a perfect, if this was a good economy for you, you would actually win just going Rich Hydra, and it, like with a couple of investors supporting you. I can, I can, I can walk into a planetary with SUVs repairing it with Rotiger. Uh huh. You could. Not lose everything. Yeah. Because when you think about it like this, let's just say you attack the top of his base right now, and you attack the planetary, and his army is out of position. Or let's say he's in position. Okay. Let's say he's in position, and mm -hmm. you attack his planetary. He pulls his army forward to, to help defend his planetary. You back up for a second out of planetary range, and then attack him again to start trading units. You trade units, he trades units, but you ma you have a good economy because that's what you're focused on. Suddenly, mm -hmm. the supply difference between you and him is... The, the fight could have started at first with you being at 200, Terran's at 160. Now the fight's over, you're back at 200 again, Terran's now at 140. You do it again, now you're at 200, Terran's at 110. You do it again, you're at 200 again, Terran's at 80, and he's just dead now. Mm -hmm. Because Rich Hydra can be remaxed again and again and again and again so fast. You just have to yeah. keep your economy running well, is all. But what, with what you're up against now, though, I would say now, yeah, you definitely need to have reward. I think the reason yeah. why I'm telling you this is because I feel like you kind of missed the ability to uh, control your opponent's economy a little bit with Roach Hydra. Because you, you switched into Broodlords really fast, but you didn't really capitalize on the Broodlord army. Okay. I, when, I, when I see planetaries, I feel like that's that's I, I need broodlords and I'm not getting anywhere, you know. Yeah. Um. If you have if you have like uh, 60 supply of Roach Hydra attacking a planetary, even if it's being repaired, it will die. Yeah. And like like six hits from the Roach Hydra, it'll take like 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 six or seven seconds for it to die, but it will die. Okay. But if you only have like 20 supply hitting it, yeah, it won't die. Corrupted right now instead. Yeah, you'd be doing way better. Yeah. It, it, the thing about Rude Lord Corrupter, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it one more time at 22:45. The thing that makes it hard is you gotta just realize that fighting a Terran player, no matter your composition, if you a move your whole army at once, you're going to take some serious fucking damage. Yeah. Like if you have Rude Lord Corrupter. And you A-move, Broodlord, like your whole army, the Broodlord and your Corruptor fly forward, and there's no Vikings immediately at your Brood, like, there's no Vikings immediately shooting your Broodlord, so your Corruptors fly in deeper, because they're like, where is something we can shoot at? And yep. suddenly you fly over, like, 12 Cyclones, all your Corruptors are going to die. Yeah. Like, it's going to just go really shitty. So I think what you should start doing is you should get in the habit of doing this, okay? This should be how you should micro fights, uh, at a very basic but yet effective level. Investors in one control group, everything else in one control group, put your army in front of the base you want to attack, okay? And the way you can do this is you can make, like, changelings, scout forward, 
And you can be like, okay, yeah. that's where we want to go. That's where my fight's going to be. So if you're going to fight the 6 o'clock base, where the planetary is, where you fought a second ago, where we saw the Hydras die, you would chill at that low ground spot in between those four the high ground spots. Just chill there for a second. Outside of, uh, of his ramp. And then you just have everything grouped up right there, and you just double click the broodlords or like control click the broodlords. Only select the broodlords, and tell them, "Hey, broodlords, a move." Just the broodlords. And then as soon as the Terran commits to a fight, fungal him. And if it's if it's juicy, and you're like, "Oh, this was a juicy fungal," then a move the rest of your army. Like then you okay. can be like, "Then all of it go," while you try to maintain a good fungal. But if okay. if your opponent does not commit to you and get into a juicy fungal and maybe he's got like three vikings poking a broodlord well you can just pull your, your broodlords back then and try to like mm -hmm. reset the situation okay. maybe like try to like you know put your broodlords a little bit further to the left or something to where they're closer to your corruptor now and maybe you maybe you just control the corruptors and try to only kill those vikings but if they back up you don't chase them okay gotcha one real quick thing about um okay since i've been going missile attack and, and carapace now my brood lords, you know, don't have a an air attack. So should I be going, still be going carapace? So your brood lords have two attacks. They're, they do actually yeah, yeah. have an air attack. They they, they are upgraded. But I mean, like, like last game I was upgrading, you know, uh, melee crown carapace? melee. So yeah. this game, you upgrade. as soon as you realize you're up against Hellion Cyclone, you shouldn't have got yeah. carapace at all on your ground. It doesn't do anything. Oh, really? Because Cyclone is a spell. Its uh, its damage is spell-based, so it pierces all armor. It doesn't have any effect of armor. And the oh, Hel the Hellion is the only other unit you'd really be having a benefit from from a from a Carapace upgrade. But a Hellion is, like, the biggest piece of shit anyways, unless you have Zerglings. Yeah. Even if you have Zerglings and he has Blue Flame, Carapace won't save you anyways. It'll two-shot your Lings no matter what. So it doesn't really do anything for you, uh, okay. for your ground units. So I would say... The best thing you could have done if you were going to go Roach Hydra this game would have been single Evo Chamber with just range weapon upgrades. And once you're done getting range weapon upgrades, go into melee upgrades. Okay. Because you're going Roach Hydra. I don't recommend Roach yeah. Hydra all the time, but that would have made yeah. sense. But okay. uh, in general, I would say a great way to do it, if you're going to open up with Roaches and then go into, like, uh, Zerglings supporting Broodlord, Corruptor, and Fester and stuff like that, getting level one melee, or getting level one range weapons into then full upgrades of melee would be the best. And then you could go back to getting level 2 and level 3 range upgrades once you have okay. level 3 melee. If you're going to go for roaches with okay. infestors into broodlord and zergling. Okay. Um, Alright. We can hit play again in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Exhausted. <laughs> but yeah, I think the composition you should go for too, uh, in general against Terran, should be you should always count it like this. Go for like twelve brood lords if they have if they have ground army like this. Go for like twelve brood lords, and then get like sixteen corruptor, and then get like eight infester. Okay. And that'll be like your primary composition, and then everything you make behind that that's not bad. It could be roaches, it could be zerglings, whatever. You, if you make those units, just have them literally not be in a control group at all. And just try to attack the other side of the map. Like, counterattack his other sides of his bases. And go for economy and stuff. Just do little rippling run bys. Yeah, like, you could literally be like, right-click his natural mineral line and just fucking forget about it. And then while yeah. that's happening, you're currently attacking with your broodlords and corruptors and stuff. Okay. Command unacceptable. I mean, I, I lose about my whole army and it's pretty much over. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I the biggest thing that I'm... Yeah. What I'm seeing in this game that's happening is you're making diverse, difficult compositions to control and you're dying because you're not controlling them properly. Yeah. Which is why I was saying you honestly could have probably won this game in Platinum just by going Roach Hydra. Because the reason why you're losing is not 100%. It's, it's not like, oh, your control just needs to be better and you'd be winning everything. You'd be winning the games without even having to go to Root Lords if you just had a better build overall. Like, you would just be winning off Roach Hydra. And stuff like that. With how you played this. Yeah. I'm... So, you know, I mean, without without the Infestor, like, the, the Roach Hydra would be just fine? 
Without Fester, if you had an optimal build, you would be you would have beaten this guy right now with just Roach Hydra. And the big thing, that's why I was saying the, the biggest thing of all about talking about someone's game is their opener. And this game, once again, was a game where you took all your gases and your main international really early. You kept winning gas in your main really early, which delayed your third. You were at like 6 minutes and 30 seconds, and there wasn't a single drone on your third base. And at Ooh, 6 minutes and 30 seconds, yeah. you should honestly be fully saturated on every base. Gas included. Like, 16 drones on minerals and, th and 6 on the gas per base. You should have already been at 66 drones at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So your, your economy was just super fucked from the beginning because of the opener and how you went for like such a fast layer and really quick hydrogen. And you made like, it was like five hydras early. That honestly were just, they were just chilling. They weren't really doing anything. Yeah, so it's just yeah. inefficient build, uh, essentially. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, first things first, I would say just try to get your, your spending under control and your economy, the builds, better. Like, we, the, from the ones we kind of talked about, the, the one I kind of told you in the previous game applies pretty hard. Even to mech. Okay. It's just with mech, okay. you could just go roaches and infestors, I would say. It'd be great. Or just, or just roaches. You could even get burrow move roaches and be like, oh, look, he's coming on my creep over there. I'm going to burrow my roaches and I'm going to move towards him underground. And if he doesn't scan immediately... And he drives on top of my roaches, and I just, bro, I just win the game. Like, that would be so easy to control. And you could just literally be like, make roaches, make roaches, make roaches, make roaches, make roaches. And your supply is going to be insane. Okay. Okay. It's just, right. an, it's an alternative option. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely give it a shot. I mean, i um, got a lot to do. Got, to, got a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, Practice, so. But um, just try... Just know this, okay? Th this should be your checkpoint. Because do you play with a game clock when you play by yourself? No. Okay, you should definitely do that. That's so I think something a lot of people don't do. And that is also, if you remember when I said how like having a zergling at the expansions and knowing how many bases your opponent's on is like a lot of uh, understanding of what you, what's happening in the game and where you and your opponent are at. It's, it helps you understand like realistically what's happening in the game. A clock is also part of that. Because if you don't play, if you don't have a game clock, you have no gauge of time as to what's good and bad. Mm -hmm. And know this, okay? If you saturate your bases fully, gas is included. So, all three of your your three bases. If it's a macro game and no all in has happened yet, if it's an all in, it doesn't apply because it's an all in. Mm -hmm. But if if you're if it's a macro game and you have not fully saturated your bases by six minutes and thirty, or if, if sorry, I'll, I'll say it like this. I'll say if you have. Saturated your bases by 6 minutes and 30 seconds. You're playing like a GM player. 6 minutes mm -hmm. and 40 seconds. You're playing like a Masters player. 6 minutes and 50 seconds. You're playing like a Diamond player. 7 minutes. You're playing like a Platinum player. Every 10 seconds, okay. just lower the league by 1. Okay. And if, you, if you're at like 8 minutes or something, or 7.30, and you have not fully saturated 3 bases, and it's supposed to be a macro game, you have... Maybe not as deep as bronze, but you're probably in the gold range at that point. Yeah. Like, it's not great. It's It needs to be improved. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Awesome. Right on. All right, man. Use that yeah, game I clock. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that went a while, didn't it? It went, like, two. Yeah, it's all good. It's kind of how my coaching lessons go sometimes. I Like, we actually st I, I was looking at the time, and we started this game with already being at an hour. Uh, my bad, dude. I didn't. Hey, I was, dude. I don't have a clock. It's okay, man. You don't pay the game right. clock. It's okay. <laughs> no worries, dude. Right, man. Well, uh, I'll probably, uh, I'll probably be back in a couple weeks. See where I'm at. All right, sounds good, man. Good luck. I right, appreciate it, dude. Thank you. All right, later, man.